Hey all here OS Reviews, in the late 2000s to early 2010s, the concept of an ultra mini PC just seemed incredibly cool, and that's where products like the OQO Model 2, which runs on a full version of Windows Vista, and Sony's Vile UX series were prime examples of this category. The problem, though, was that these tiny computers just weren't super practical at the end of the day, and they were just so expensive compared to their laptop counterparts, and that was for pretty underpowered CPUs even back then. At the same time, there were options like the Palm PDAs, which were much less powerful and more limited in what they could do, just offering simple organizer functions, but just extremely accessible. So in the middle, there was a product category known as MIDs, or Mobile Internet Devices, and that's where products like the iGo P8860, as well as the BenQ S6, came into play. They offered more power than a conventional Palm PDA, and also a larger display for browsing the web, but often ran on a version of Linux or Symbian, as opposed to a full desktop class OS, although, of course, the price also reflected in that, those often selling for around, say, $600 instead of over a grand for the true UMPCs. Well, today we're taking a retro unboxing of a unit that is kind of an MID, which was sitting in storage for over 14 years, and this one here is the iTelco Idol. This is a product which actually has identical specifications to the aforementioned iGo MID, as well as the BenQ S6 that we had over here. So all three of these devices actually came with the exact same processor, which was a entry-level Intel Atom CPU. It's the Z500 that was clocked at 800 megahertz and a single-core chip. However, what's kind of interesting about all three of these devices is that they are using an Intel x86 chip, which means compared to something that is using ARM, it is technically also able to run Windows. In fact, a lot of folks have been able to sideload something like Windows XP onto these units, even though they came by default with Linux. And as a result, you're able to get a true UMPC experience for something that is about half the price of a competing Sony or a OQO at the time. Aside from that Atom processor, it came with 512 megabytes of RAM, built in Wi-Fi of course, Bluetooth, there was even GPS built on in, pretty advanced for the time. And this model from iTelco, which I I believe is a carrier, actually did come unlocked and supports GPRS. So you can insert a SIM card and have limited data connectivity, and it does have a 4.8 inch touchscreen with an 800 by 480 resolution. Pretty elegant packaging, says idle, internet device on Linux. And underneath here, there's kind of a safety sticker. There was a user guide that is just so thick by today's standards and actually documents everything in a lot of detail with multiple languages. There's also a quick user guide, a carrying pouch or case that you get, which is really neat. And this allows you to protect the MID, UMPC when on the go. It's carrier branded and it's magnetic, which is actually quite modern. And there's a soft touch microfiber internal. Down below that, we have a removable battery, something we just no longer see these days, and it made them a lot easier to swap out and replace. This was a 2,700 milliamp hour capacity cell, and it was good for about four to five hours of internet browsing back then, which was deemed to be quite average. Of course, smartphones these days can often last longer than that, uh, but that's just something to keep as a reference. He even received a USB thumb drive, which included additional software and drivers, a pair of headphones using standard 3.5 millimeters with a microphone for answering calls if you're using it with a SIM card, and there's also a mini USB cable. And finally, down below here, we have even a microfiber cleaning cloth, a uh, very interesting accessory, and there's even a spare stylus, since one is already included in the unit. Truly a lot. And that's not even all. On the side here, we have the power adapter, uh, which can actually be added to different countries. Overall, a pretty compact charger for what it is. All right, so the device itself, back cover just looks like this. That's where the full-size SIM can be popped in. It is a model which, just like the aforementioned iGo version, has the same processor, configuration, and even the same slide-out QWERTY keyboard. And what's kind of surprising is now putting these two side-by-side, side, the BenQ isn't even necessarily a lot thinner. 
as we can see there, despite the fact that it's missing a keyboard. The BenQ had access to no cameras, whereas the iGo slash Idol did have cameras, both front-facing for video conferencing and selfies, as well as a rear-facing. However, the BenQ did have access to a gyroscope and accelerometer. Now, speaking of shells, this, though, is a very glossy polycarbonate plastic, which I wouldn't say feels the most premium, but definitely has a substantial weight to it. And for what it is, it looks elegant enough, despite the fact that it does attract fingerprints like crazy. Now, aside from that 4.8 inch touchscreen display, there's also a capacitive labeled smart key there on the side. So giving that a tap, you can see it lights up and you can bring up the home screen as well as an email and power keys for suspending as well as shutting down the system. The slide out QWERTY keyboard is a four row layout. Granted, the keys are not super tactile. It's all right, but I think HTC phones from back in the day maybe had a little bit better keyboard responsiveness, but it's not bad and it is backlit. So you are able to see it in the dark. There are function keys for the numbers and additional alt key for things like symbols, this system does not have a spring-assisted design, so the entire thing you have to kind of flick open and close yourself, otherwise it kind of just stays in that one spot. Now the base of the unit has access to the barrel plug for charging, there is a microphone on here, there's a lock for preventing the touchscreen from triggering. Edge also features a, an optional port for connecting an antenna for TV, although that is not an accessory that's included in the box, it's kind of interesting. And then on the very top there is a shutter key for the camera, which is also quite neat, 3.5mm headphone jack, and then the aforementioned full-size USB Type-A port. This is, again, really cool to see and just makes it feel even more like a miniaturized PC or computer. And then on the edge here, also there's a micro SD card reader, along with a mini USB port port for transferring data onto a actual laptop, for example. So pretty fully stacked for I.O. on something so small. The only thing that you're missing would be, say, a video output like HDMI. There's also a telescopic stylus, which is made out of aluminum and becomes a little bit larger if you're using it on the touchscreen, which is a resistive screen that was the norm back in the day, and it made it easier to tap on for smaller icons. And then we do have that rear-facing camera, pretty simple stuff, three megapixels, and it does have autofocus as well, although no LED flash, and also the loudspeaker is rear-facing. Coming back to the system now, as aforementioned, the touchscreen is actually not too bad. Just tapping with your fingers and not pressing too hard, you can see that for the most part it's still being responsive enough, although if you use a stylus, a harder tip, it could be even more responsive. So one of the better resistive touchscreens at the very least. It's running on mid Linux. It's a proprietary version that is developed with Telco, so the interface may at first seem similar to something like an older version of Android since it has these widgets that you're able to actually move around pretty freely. And at the very bottom carousel are your folders which we can interact with to bring up additional applications. For example, this one here for instant messenger such as IM clients like AOL, kind of similar to something like Teams in today's standards. You can also set your status as available, do not disturb, offline, things like that, and compose different messages. The next icon here will show your multimedia. So there is a music player, photo viewer, video player that you have on board, and you're able to use this thing like a MP4, MP5 player. It's actually powered by real player so the software here is pretty robust in terms of supporting a lot of different codecs that you may want to throw at it here's a few images as an example taken with the camera which you can see is really actually not as bad as you would think looking at the resolution alone and actually again has that autofocus at least now the ui is kind of interesting in that as you are interacting with the touchscreen with these gestures it actually draws that physical line down below there but other commands that you have in this real player based navigation system include zooming into your images so you can crop in see things with a little bit more detail speaking of that camera if we jump right on in you can see that the menus are actually quite simple and then use again the shutter key on the top, tapping on once to focus, and then all the way down to snap the image. Of course, much slower than on modern day devices, but you can then delete or keep the image. Some additional properties here include the brightness that you can also fine tune, as well as resolution, and you can even record video just by tapping on the top key over there. So pretty simple, but does the job. In terms of ebook reading, this is also quite basic, although notably, 
there is no Excel built on in, which is kind of interesting. So it does really act as a kind of desktop class computer for some of those office-based tools. At the very least, you're able to highlight, drag around the text. The next menu over here opens up the utility tools. This is where the aforementioned writer and impress, kind of a weird translation, is referring to the PPT. So some of these tiny details are just a little bit funny, but you can tell that the cursor here moves around. You can create an empty presentation. You can open up a template. Uh, it can also open up an existing presentation. So let's actually tap on open, for instance. I'm going to open up the previous one that I created as a test. And again, this menu system is really <laughs> reminiscent of something like Windows 98. So it's pretty cool in a geeky way, but you can also tell how in terms of practicality, it's just not the uh, best thing in the world. It really is just like open office on a laptop where we have all of those additional contextual menus on the ribbon, saving this document, uh, as well as searching things up, exporting it as a PDF, viewing it in a web browser, printing it. It's everything that you would get from a regular version of the software. Uh, one of the benefits here of having a resistive touchscreen though is, again, using a cursor is a little bit easier if you're trying to take a look at tiny little text details, since you can use a stylus to do that, highlight different words, you can bold it, make it italicized, underline, and other things like charts, templates, you can even create there on the side, which is pretty ridiculous. Navigate back and forth between those slides. So pretty crazy and also fun from a technical perspective, but in terms of usability, uh, there's definitely challenges on such a small screen. Let's go back home again, and there is even an audio recorder that takes advantage of the microphone, which is good. You can record voice memos and also use it for IM. A simple email client, and this one here, which looks like a dictionary, is a little bit limited. So for example, you can see that typing in hello, it will allow you to see the definition in Italian. So you're able to go between Italian, which was the kind of carrier Alice Mobile that this product was sold under, and also English. But there's no additional languages which are offered. A little bit more of a regional tool, but also gives you an idea of what's capable of doing. Now the next menu over uh, also gives us access to stock info, but this requires connecting to the internet. Next tab over is simple games. They are very basic, but it's kind of retro and fun in a way. Nibbles is basically snake. And then just using the arrow keys, you can control this little snake as he moves around. You want to eat more and more of the stalls, of course, to make the snake just grow a little bit longer. Klotsky is about moving the final piece over here onto the outside of the board. So you're able to shuffle the order around. So again, using the resistive touchscreen, it's a little bit more challenging, but you're able to play this back on here. Now, due to this running on kind of a custom version of Linux, it was unfortunately not too easy to get additional third-party applications on here. There wasn't really an app store to speak of. So that's kind of what you're stuck with, unless you are, again, hacking it to Ubuntu or Windows, and then you can install additional third-party apps. Although keep in mind that you will have to play around with some of the drivers to get everything set up and running. Not every OS will work perfectly out of the box like on any other computer. Under connectivity, you can also turn on airplane mode as well as interact with these different wireless options respectively. And if you're wondering, yes, you can still connect to Wi-Fi just fine. The only limitation, at least in the original kind of OS that it came with would be uh, because of the more outdated version of the browser, which is technically based on a version of Firefox, uh, you will find that a lot of pages will no longer work due to just security and certificates being outdated. And in terms of page rendering, this version of Firefox did support Flash back in the day, so you could even view back YouTube videos, play back some light games, uh, and that was back when, of course, web pages were also less graphically demanding. So basic things like searching up the Google queries, it can still do. You can also use the D-pad here for moving up, down, left, and right. Although even loading this page, it is taking a lot of resources there to kind of spin and think about what it's doing, and there's going to be more delay in the action. But there we have it. That's been just a interesting retro look back at the idle MID slash UMPC. Again, this particular model was not very mainstream just because it was under a carrier brand that was not international. However, the hardware of this thing is again pretty much identical to the iGo mobile internet device. 
and that in itself is similar to many of the other Intel Atom-based UMPCs and MIDs that were available at the time. The promise of being able to do so much in a ultra-compact form factor just seemed extremely compelling, and in a way I think some of that fun is unfortunately just no longer quite as prevalent in today's landscape as devices have become more powerful but also more ubiquitous in terms of form factor. So you can check out additional details if interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.